Hey guys, welcome back once again to Reignited. And we are still, yes, still working on our twin charge magnum here. In this episode, we're gonna do kind of a fun project here. We're gonna work on our valve cover dilemma. Now I can hear you saying, what valve cover dilemma? Well, as a consequence of building my own intake manifold on this thing, I actually took away two vital functions that the original intake manifold performs. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So if we take a close look at a Hemi cylinder head, you'll notice that this is an earlier model Hemi. It doesn't matter, they're all very much the same here. Look at that port right there. What does this port do? Well, you can see it's open to the inside of the cylinder head itself and down into the crankcase. This is your PCV or positive crankcase ventilation port. Now there's one on each side of the cylinder head, one on the driver's side, one on the passenger side. And if you look at the intake manifold, that is your opening right there. So this is your PCV system on a Hemi engine. But more so than that even, if you look over here, on the intake manifold, this is actually your oil fill location as well. So it goes through that port in the cylinder head right here and then down into the crankcase. That's actually how you fill a Hemi engine with oil. All right, so you guys, I just wanna take a couple of minutes here and talk a little bit about the PCV system because I feel like there's some confusion or perhaps misconceptions about what it actually is. So I'm gonna break it down here real quick for you guys. So PCV stands for positive crankcase ventilation. Well, that's great. What does that mean exactly? So if you think about your standard internal combustion engine, you have your piston here that's going up and down in the cylinder. And of course here in the combustion chamber, you have your little explosions of fuel and air that are happening there. And so that provides some cylinder pressure. Now you have these rings here on the piston that are designed to help keep that pressure within the cylinder but it's not 100% effective. Some of that pressure does leak its way past those rings and down into the crankcase of the engine. Now that gives you positive crankcase pressure. Now with that being the case, you need a way to ventilate that pressure. Now, if you don't find a way to ventilate that pressure, then you could actually have some very serious oil leak complications. In fact, you can end up with a situation where the front crank seal might actually blow out and give you a huge oil leak. The rear main seal, even the valve covers could potentially blow out on there and cause a huge oil leak because you haven't found a way to ventilate that pressure. In fact, there's a funny story about that. Back when I was 17 years old, I moved down to San Diego with my older brother. We went down there with just the, our cars and whatever we had in our cars, that was everything we had. And the very first day I drove into San Diego, my PCV valve plugged up on my little 1988 Nissan Pathfinder that I had and it blew out the dipstick and it blew out the valve cover gasket and poured oil over my engine. So I'm here in a brand new city somewhere I've never been. I don't know anybody there and my car is just smoking out the entire freeway because I got oil all over the headers on there. It was not a great welcome to San Diego moment. I thought I knew about cars, but at the time I didn't know that much about cars. And so I was like, I don't know what's happening here. I got oil all over the place, what happened? That's exactly what happened. It plugged up the ventilation system for the crankcase and the pressure then overcame the seal on both the dipstick itself and the valve cover gasket and puked oil absolutely everywhere. It was a terrible experience. Now I do want to make an important clarification here to you guys. This, what's happening here inside the crankcase, this has nothing to do with your actual oil pressure of your vehicle. The oil pressure is strictly relegated to their specific oil galleries where pressurized oil is heading to different locations. In here, this oil that is sitting in your oil pan that is not pressurized. Your crankcase itself just has the air pressure of that combustion pressure that's leaking past the rings and the pistons moving up and down. That's it. Now, as I said, a PCV system has been a necessity on engines basically since they were created. And you might have seen them before and not even realize what it was you're looking at. If you think back to like an older, let's say a Chevy 350 small block, and they had those weird mushroom looking things on the valve covers, that was the PCV system. That was the breather setup on the valve cover to ventilate that extra pressure. Now, as emission systems became a thing, as they moved later on in time, they decided in their infinite wisdom, these engineers, hey, if we're ventilating this crankcase pressure, which has oil vapor in it, that could potentially be bad for the environment. We don't wanna do that. We wanna keep this self-contained within the engine. So essentially every modern engine after that, they recirculate that crankcase ventilation pressure right back into the intake manifold to be reburned by the vehicle. 
Now there's a couple of drawbacks to this. Now the first of those is that, yes, there's a lot of oil vapors that you're re-ingesting into the vehicle. So if ever you pulled off an intake manifold and you're like, man, why is this so slimy and sticky and oily? Well, that's why, because you're recirculating all those oil vapors right down through the intake tracks and it's making an absolute mess of everything. Now the second reason is because once you introduce these oil type vapors back in through the intake system, it can effectively lower your octane rating for the combustion process, which could make it more susceptible to knock. Now, this is a really, really rare thing. And honestly, you would not know a difference unless you had a more higher strung vehicle that was making a lot of power or something with a really high compression ratio. That's when it would actually matter and really come into play. And in fact, I myself am not actually a huge fan of a catch can setup. I prefer to let the factory PCB system do what it does. Now, a lot of people were surprised by that, but my opinion is if you've already been running a vehicle for 50, 75,000 miles, if you're then switching that to a catch can setup, you're not going to undo all of the oily, greasy mess that was already there from all those miles of running it with the PCB system. It doesn't affect the way the car runs. Just leave it as is. Don't put a catch can on there and give yourself a new task that you have to do of having to empty this oil catch can every few thousand miles or so. It's just yet another thing that people will forget to do, like actually cleaning their reusable air filters. However, there are a couple of exceptions to where I do want to use a catch can. Now, the first of those is if you put a catch can on your vehicle, basically right from brand new or with very, very low miles on it. I'm absolutely in support of that because then you can keep those intake runners clean. Now, in my case, I want to use a catch can setup for three different reasons. Now, the first of all is because I eliminated the factory PCV system, so I can't use that anyway. The second reason is because this engine is essentially new and the intake manifold is new. I don't want to dirty that up with a bunch of oily vapors, so I'd like to use a catch can to keep that from happening. Now, the third reason is a bit more complex, but I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. Now we've already talked about that most of that crankcase pressure comes from your combustion pressure that is not being fully contained within the cylinders. Well, what do you think happens when you boost a vehicle, supercharge it, turbocharge it, even with nitrous? Well, this combustion pressure increases significantly in the cylinders, so you're going to get even more leakage past those rings. What's another thing that contributes? Well, on a boosted vehicle, oftentimes, and in this engine I did, oftentimes they will open up the ring gap on there just so that when it heats up, those ring ends don't hit together, butt up and break the piston. But that leaves a larger gap than normal in the piston ring. So even more combustion pressure is going to be slipping past those pistons than normal. So it's kind of the perfect storm there where now that you have a vehicle that is making much higher combustion pressure, but also has more opportunity to leak past the pistons. So you're going to have a lot more crankcase pressure than any normal vehicle actually would. So I think that's a prime candidate for using a catch can in that case. And that's exactly why I'm using a Motion Raceworks catch can on this particular build. All right, you guys, I hope that clears up some things about a PCV system for you. Let's go ahead and get back to the fab. Now, pretty much your standard Hemi valve cover are these composite style, or I guess we'll say just plastic. I think they look really nice, but unfortunately you can't modify them very easy. Now with the custom manifold I made for our supercharger system, I've effectively blocked those ports completely on both sides of the cylinder head. I had to go with a set of these aluminum valve covers. That's what came on this Magnum was these aluminum valve covers. Now they bolt directly up to any Hemi engine. However, there's some differences here and primarily among those is the coil packs. These were originally designed with the single style coil packs here with a spark plug wire going across to the other bank. Very cluttered, very ugly looking. And as you guys know, on this particular car, I already converted it to the dual style coils that all the modern Hemis have. So I wanna retain these valve covers, but that means I'm gonna have to build basically a new mounting system for those coil packs onto this valve cover but I needed the aluminum here because I'm going to be welding on these 10 AN breather fittings here so I can run those to a catch can so I can still have that PCV system. And also I need to be able to weld on an oil fill cap so I could actually put oil in this engine, rather important. Now, one of the other upgrades I'm going to make these aluminum valve covers while I'm working on them is, as I mentioned, I'm gonna have to cut all these aluminum pedestals off for the original coil mounts on here. I really don't wanna make a bunch of new aluminum bungs to weld into place here. Making 16 of those is a huge pain in the butt and then welding them all on. 
I'd really rather not do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a really good design that comes from the LS engine. Now the LS engine has a lot of good features to it. And one of those, in my opinion, is that the coil packs are mounted to a bracket directly on top of the valve cover. And that whole bracket and all the coils can come off as one unit. I think that's a good setup. That's what I'm going to be doing here. And this is the design that I came up with to mount the coils all as one. So this whole entire thing will have the coils mounted to it, which will then slide directly into the valve cover and it can all be removed as one unit. This way, I only have to make three aluminum pedestals and weld those to the valve cover rather than 16. So a much better system in my opinion. Now, this thing right here is another one of the reasons why it was such a game changer getting this Langmuir Systems CNC plasma table because I was able to design stuff like this in my kind of kind of in my spare time while I'm in the house not doing anything else I can design something like this and then just come out and cut it whenever I feel like it such a cool system I'm finally able to make really neat stuff like this let me put it all together and show you guys exactly what it looks like So here you can see I have my new pedestals installed for my coil bracket mounting system here. And I have my 10AN fitting installed here for my Motion Raceworks catch can that I'll be running. Let me show you what it looks like with all of the coils installed. Here it is all installed with the new bracket that I made. And again, this whole thing bolts on with only three bolts and then you can remove all of the coil packs at once. So I really like that. I'm really happy with the way that came out. And it's gonna work really good. Now, obviously, because I just have these three aluminum bungs here, the rest of the coil mounting bolts have to actually mount directly to the coil bracket itself. So to facilitate that, I went ahead and welded these nuts here on the back side of the bracket. That way you're not having to hold some nuts in place where you're trying to tighten down these bolts. But this serves a dual purpose as well, because if you don't want to actually pull the entire coil bracket assembly off, you can still pull the individual coils out just by undoing those two particular bolts. So we've got our driver's side valve cover all finished up here. Now we need to move on to the passenger side. Now this one I'll have to weld on not only the AN fitting, but also the oil fill cap on this one. So a little bit of extra work here, but hopefully this one turns out as good as this one did because I'm really happy with how this looks. Really happy with how this came out. We have our oil fill cap installed on our valve cover. We have our AN fittings installed for our catch can, and we have our pedestals installed for our coil packs so we can get those all mounted up. Uh, still going back and forth whether or not I'm actually going to paint these valve covers back to black again, just to make them kind of a bit more innocuous, not stand out quite so much. But the raw aluminum kind of has a certain look to it and it kind of goes along with some of the other stuff that I have going on there. Still deciding on that. You guys let me know down in the comments down below. Would you rather me keep these things as raw aluminum or do you think I should paint them black? So another exciting project checked off the list on the Twin Charge Magnum. In our next episode, we're gonna step away from fabrication for once and we're going to be working on our fuel system. Hopefully in the next episode, we'll get the entire fuel system completed on this car. You guys know, once you're getting to the fuel system, you're getting really close to actually starting this thing. So I just wanna say thank you guys so much for watching, keeping me motivated on this whole project. We'll see you next time on Reignited.